get raised in this life Because they told us we was black when we really didn't realize And I don't wanna be no plug, that's all they talking about I don't wanna be no thug, that's all they talking about I don't wanna be no hitter, that's all they talking about What's going on, brother? You said you want to know about Judah, right? I didn't say I want to know about Judah. I said, all right, I'm going to come up with it. There you go. Oh, yeah. 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 Any question you have, yeah. whatever concern you have, yeah. come with your brother, man. So, are we living up under the commandments of the Old Testament? Absolutely. The, you, I mean, that whole, con, that whole uh, wordage of Old Testament and New Testament, that's a new thing. Right? That's a whole totally new thing. First and foremost, what were the apostles reading out of? What was Christ reading out of? Right? The Torah, right? And the, the whole Tanakh, right? Now, when you, talk, when you come across what's today called the New Testament, that's later, later, right? With the writings of Paul and, and, the, and the Gospel, and so and the books that they call the Gospel today, right? So, when Christ says keep God's laws, which laws were we talking about? Talking about the ones in the Old Testament. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. Doesn't Abraham talk, or God talked to Abraham to say that the promise was going to come through him believing, or did the promise come through him through the covenant of the law? Well, he's, he's the father, he's the father of faith, right? He, he was the, uh, what's you call it? He became God's friend. Why? Because of his faith, right? right? And what was his actions that showed his faith? He believed what God was saying. And did what? He had faith. And did what? He Grabbed his family and left. Right. That was the action of him right. doing. Right. Right. Believing God in his faith. But, that didn't was his... He, but didn't he say that all nations would be blessed through him having faith? So it wasn't, Let's go there. Let's go there. So, so it wasn't the law at that particular time, right? No, absolutely. There was always a law. Every time God... Speaks to man as a law. Correct. Absolutely. Right. But it wasn't a Torah at that time. It was the Torah. The, 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 it's always been Torah. But because the time, Hebrew word Torah means right, teaching. But I'm, I'm saying or, at the time of Abraham, there wasn't a written Torah at that particular time. Watch this. We can okay. go there. 26 and 5, Genesis 26 and 5. We're just going to read it. And you give me that in the Hebrew. And you give me that in the Hebrew. Watch this. Genesis 26 and 5 in the Hebrew. You got, you got the blue letter? This is the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 5. Uh -huh. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, uh -huh. my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He said he kept his charge, his commandments, his statutes, and his laws. So this is in the time of Abraham. Way, way, way before the time that the Israelites went to Sinai, right? And got, and got what we know as the Torah today through Moses. So it's saying right here that Abraham, Abraham believed him, believed God, kept he kept his charge, kept his law, statutes, and commandments. Now watch this. Go to Hebrew. Read. Read the verse again. Just right here. Right here. Uh, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now go to Hebrew and see what it says for laws. This is the Strong's H8451 Torah, the law, direction, instruction, uh, instruction of messianic age, the body of prophetic teaching, but that, uh, your first definition is the most important. Huh. The law, direction, and instruction. So the law of the Torah is always existed. Every time man, uh, God commanded man anything, that's a law. Right. 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 The first it's commandment to Adam and Eve is reproduce and make the world fruitful. That's Torah. Right. 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 Any commandment from any time God speaks to man and tells him just that's a law. Right. Period. Right. I agree with you that's Torah. Right. Oh, man, I right. But the question I was asking, since Abraham believed God and God said there would be a promise, uh -huh. that all nations would be blessed through the promise, right. he didn't say they would be blessed through the law. They would be blessed well, through the promise. They won't, they won't be what? They wouldn't be blessed through 
the law, they would be blessed through the promise because there was no written Torah at the time that God was talking to Abraham. But, we just, we just, we, we, we right. just what's it called, established right. that the Torah has always existed. Right, right. And the word of God has always existed. Exactly. That's the law. It, the, the, you just agreed with me that every time God commands a man, man to do something, that's law. That's the law. That's Torah. Correct. Well, so the question I was asking was this: Was God promised that Abraham and all the nations would be blessed? Let's go there. Through faith, that the promise would come through believing. Go to Genesis. Let's read that. Twelve and nine, right? Okay. Twelve and nine. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 12 and verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be blessed, a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. You say he's going to bless them that bless thee. Read. And curse them that curseth thee. And curse them that curseth thee. Right? So that came with a stipulation. Right? In, right, we're going to keep reading, read. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And nothing about it to have faith is going to, there's even, what's it called, brought up in that verse, right? But, and also you said that the whole, all nations will be blessed, whatever, right? But you, you heard the stipulation, and curse thee that, cur I'm going to curse them that curses thee. We already understand that nations already have cursed the seed of Abraham, which is Israel, right? That's it. Read. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2 and verse 10. What na nation hath not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? You said, what nation hasn't had, hasn't had gotten a part of her kingdom? This is the nation of Israel and taken of her spoils, right? And we already, I forget exactly, the Bible says that we are accursed among the heathen. You got it? Read. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 13. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen. He said we were a curse. It came to pass as we became a curse among the heathen. Read. O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. And then it said, when that day comes, when then we're gonna be a blessing, right? Yes, we're gonna be this light, the, the light to the light to the world at that day, when that day comes. But they still have to be punished. Because God says that He's gonna curse them that curse the seed of Abraham, which is the Israelites. Because the promise went to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? And then the Israelites were accursed among the nations. So apparently all these nations are cursed because all kingdoms. All nations had their hands in the oppression of the Israelites. Right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, uh -huh. clear as a crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Uh -huh. In the midst of the city, or it's lucky, in the midst of the street of it, and of either side of the river, was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations so right there it's saying that all the water there's going to be rivers coming out this is uh, uh, allegorical too right we understand that that, it's, that the water we understand is the word of god right but right there it says that the, the, the tree of life is going to be bearing 12 manners of fruit, uh, different leaves, right? Which bear fruit. And that's talking about the 12 different tribes of Israel, right? And those leaves are for the healing of the nations. But that's at the, it, 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 that's when the kingdom of God is here on, uh, here on earth already. Right? right? That's after all these heathen nations are going to be punished and everything. Right? Then their healing is going to start. Right? Then they're going to be learning the... Uh, 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 start worshiping the, uh, worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all that. All except one kingdom. I mean, all except one nation, which is the nation of the Edomites. Right? The only nation that's promised no grace, no uh, 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 grace uh, or, or, or uh, mercy of God. They're going to be destroyed. Per the book of Obadiah, read. It's the book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall 
shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. So once these nations go into captivity, right? For the allotted time that God said that which we believe it's a thousand years according to the Bible, right? All nations are going to start their healing process except one because they're going to be destroyed, which are the Edomites, which are the Europeans today. That's right. You got it. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 7 and 8. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Verse 8. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord. Remember, he said, curse them that curse thee, right? Right. So God said that he's going to put all our curses... Right? All the Christians that are found in Deuteronomy, you're going to be put on a heathen. Read. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day. Okay. This is the book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. So right here. It's, uh, uh, and, and this is a uh, in the uh, prophetic language, right? So read that again. From the top, but in the last days, it's in the last days, right? Read when that when, when that time comes in the world in the world to come. Read. It shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. The mountain of the house of the Lord, right? In the Hebrew, right there is his heart, which is. Uh, in the prophetic language, it means nation or kingdom, right? So the nation or the kingdom of Israel, the house of the Lord, was going to be what? And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow in unto it. It's going to become, read that again. No, 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 I, need, I need that. Okay. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. The top of the mountains, all the other nations, read and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. All these people of the earth is going to be flowing unto the temple, right? To the nation of Israel, where the temple of God is going to be found at. The third temple, which is spoken about in the book of Ezekiel. Read. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the law is going to come out from Zion, and the word of the Lord is going to come out of Jerusalem, which where is the house of the Lord that? Right. And who was that speaking in the temple? Who was that speaking in the temple? Yeah, is that Jesus speaking in the temple, or is that God himself? This is the word of God right there, right? right. right? Through prophecy, was that Isaiah or was that uh, uh, Micah? That was Micah, because Micah, uh, Micah and Isaiah speaks about the same prophecy. So that right? third temple, it says that Jesus Christ is going to touch the Mount of Olives, right? And mm. that's whole two different situations, right there. That's what he says. Yeah, that's what he yeah, because it says yeah, that, that's not where the temple's found at. That's outside of Jerusalem, right? Like literally outside of Jerusalem, like right next to it. So no, that's not it. talking. About. That's not correlating. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter eight, verse twenty-three. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nation. So in those days ten men, right, is, is going to take hold. Read that again. And thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nation. So ten men is going to take hold of that. All the languages of the whole nations, right, of the whole world. Read even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So all these nations are going to cleave to the children of Israel, right? 
because they're all going to know that the one true God is their God and is with us, right? Because we got to understand the type of things that's going to happen when you, when Christ comes back, man, right? There's going to be destruction. There's going to, like, people are going to understand there's only one God then, man, right? And they're going to want to learn of this one God, right? Just like it's prophesied in the Bible when they have to go through the children of Israel. Right, that's it? Yeah. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So this is touching on your very first exact thing that you asked me, are we under the laws of the so-called Old Testament? Christ says that we are, right? Until, until the sky, uh, to the heavens and earth, right, passes. Not one child or one tittle of the law is going to go. Uh, it's going to. It's going to pass, right? Read. Shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So all be fulfilled. This is what Christians get it twisted at. Boom! Christ fulfilled everything. Let's see. Let's see what he fulfilled. Acts three and eighteen. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God be, before had showed by, by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ should... Acts 3 and 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of his holy prophets... So all the things that the Most High God has showed, right, the world, or the Israelites, right, through the mouth of his holy prophets, read... That Christ should suffer. Uh-huh. That he, Christ should come and suffer in what? He had so fulfilled. So that's what he came to fulfill. That's what he was talking about. Everything is fulfilled right there. All the prophecies, right? And the laws and the prophets, right? It's not, right? About his uh his death and his suffering, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Also, watch this, Luke 24, 44. It's the book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. This is the words of Christ, right? He said, These are the words that I have spoken unto you while I was still with you. This is after his resurrection, B. All things must be fulfilled, uh -huh. which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So that's what he was talking about. The prophecies of not just him coming being born but uh, him suffering dying on the cross crucified crucified and uh, being resurrected now go back to the verse this is verse 19 in, uh it's lucky matthew 5 and verse 19 whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven so him that breaketh god's laws right Him that breaketh even the smallest commandment, and teach men that also do the same, shall be called the, the least in the kingdom of heaven. Read. Right? But whosoever shall do and teach them, but those that do and teach the laws, the laws of the Lord, and teach people to keep them also. Read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Christian Church tells us those laws are done away with. Christ came and done, done away with his laws. Well, they must not be reading it because you just read it and it ain't never been changed that the whole law has to be fulfilled. And Christ fulfilled the law. So the churches, the churches that do teach that the law is not something you're supposed to keep, they're not, they're not reading it. But well, how did he fulfill the law? I mean, you're saying that he, are you saying that he fulfilled the law for us? Christ did. He fulfilled the law for us? Right, Christ did. Brother, we, we just read two verses earlier. You know what I mean? What, what we read earlier, the law is going to be going forth from Zion, and that's how we're going to heal the nations. We read that, right? So the law can't be done away with because the law is going to be in the kingdom of heaven when, when Christ returns to the earth. So, so what what you just said can't be true, right? Well, I mean that's what that's what the Bible says that Jesus fulfilled the law. Brother, 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 we, you, you, that's not what it means. He just read you a verse that said it's only talking about him dying and suffering on the cross. 
That's all that's all it's referencing. That's all he fulfilled. Because there's still prophecies about Christ in the Old Testament and in the laws of God. So what, what can, how can we put that together? How can that mesh and make the Bible not contradict itself? Yeah. I think it's in Romans where it says that I think it's Romans uh, 4th chapter where it talks about Jesus fulfilled the law of course people couldn't keep the law so that's what he that's came that's not for. true that's not true brother people couldn't keep the law did the disciples keep the law they tried where does it say any of the disciples sinned that I, I said the, the 12 disciples when Christ was walking. Because right. Paul didn't meet Christ. He didn't walk with Christ. I'm talking about the disciples that walk with Christ. Where does it say they sinned that? Okay. And give me Luke 1. Thomas, when he doubted that Jesus was resurrected. Thomas, is that a sin? He doubted. Is that a sin? He doubted to not believe in his sin. That's not true. I, and I believe it is a sin, but did he, doubting isn't a sin. You talking about when he got resurrected, right? Right, right. When Jesus was resurrected, they said he had seen Jesus. Yeah. Thomas didn't believe that. Exactly, because he didn't believe he resurrected until he showed him his hands. He didn't him to touch his hands, right? Right. Now I just want to get to the fact. And, 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 and he believed right then, right? Right. But you're saying that the law must be fulfilled and Jesus didn't fulfill all the law. We, no, that's not what we're saying. Okay. We're saying Christ fulfilled, Christ kept the law. There's prophecies about Christ in the Old Testament right. that still haven't come to pass yet. Right. I agree so he only, we read in Luke 24, we read in Luke 24 that he spoke to his disciples about he, he fulfilled the law, the prophets, and the Psalms that concerning him. Not that he was, the laws are away with after that. We just read the very next verse of Matthew saying what? If you don't keep the law, impeachment and don't not keep the law, what did they say? You're, you're going to be at least in the kingdom of heaven. Right, right. So, saying the law is done away with is contradictory oh, no. to what Christ is talking about. I away with I'm just saying that Christ fulfilled the law, and we're supposed to teach other people, as you're saying. To keep the law, right? Right, but the only way you keep the law is spiritual, right? We're doing it right now. Right, the law is spiritual, right? The law is spiritual, but we got to act out the law. That's your works. Right, right. But, but faith saying, is spiritual. Right. The, and faith the, is a work, but all, the works all, is a physical work. Right, all believers. We're keeping the, the works of the law right now. Right. By what? Not shaving our beard. I'm pretty sure you shave. That's a sin. Right. Not eating pork, shrimp, fiber, lobster. Wearing fringes is a law. Wearing unmixed fabric is a law. That's a simple law. Right. None of none of this garments we have on are mixed fabric. 100 percent. Yeah, that, that's yeah. That, that's the least of the commands. Eating pork is something you control on a daily basis. Because they put pork in everything these days, in gum, in gummy gummy worms, and some simple ingredients like uh, cereal, all that stuff. But you gotta be diligent and do what the Most High is, what's, what's gonna please the Most High, because the, the, he's expecting that from you, first and foremost. What you got, Luke one? Yeah, where you Luke? Where you at? You can get Luke one real quick, and then get Luke number twenty four, because it's a prophecy of Christ that hasn't happened yet. And we gonna go into in further detail. Give me that. It's the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 67. No, I want 1 and 5. 5 and 6. Book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. Zacharias? Who's Zacharias? John the Baptist's father, right? Go ahead. And of the course of Abia, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God. They were both righteous before God doing what? Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. What? Blameless. They're blameless, meaning what? They didn't sin. This is before John the Baptist was even born, before Christ was even born. So people were keeping the law right here. So what do you mean to tell me? When Christ came, now they don't have to keep the law no more? What does that mean to you, though? So we read a couple verses. We keep bringing that up. What does that mean to you? That means that just like all the sacrifices that the Hebrews were doing when Moses was out in the wilderness with them, that was a part of the law to keep in the sacrificial covenant. But when Jesus came, after he was resurrected, there was no more sacrifices. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, there was no more sacrifices. Are you sure? 
Are you sure? That's what it says. Brother, brother, brother. We're just going to read the Bible to you. Don't worry about it. Read Acts 21. Let's see what Paul did. Years after Christ died. You know what I want? What you got? We can get that in a second. Give me that. Okay. Acts 21 and 16. And there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Nas Nassau of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we shall lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. On the day following, Paul went in with us unto James. And all the elders of the were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles in his min by his ministry. And when they heard it, they were glorified. They, they glorified the, the Lord and said unto him, Thou say, thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews did what? what, they, what thousands of Jews did what? Thousands of Jews there are which believe. And they are zealous of They're the law. Zealous of the law. They're zealous of the law. They're going crazy by the law. They, they want to be fervent in the law. They're keeping it. Read. And they are informed of thee. Uh -huh. And thou teachest all the Jews. Read. They teach all the Jews. Read. Which are among the Gentiles uh -huh. to forsake Moses. Go ahead. Saying that they. So they're accusing Paul. You're teaching these Gentiles to forsake Moses' law. Read. Saying that they ought not to circumcise their children. Uh -huh. Neither to walk after the customs. Read. And, and uh, uh, what is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, uh -huh. for they will hear that thou art come. Uh -huh. Do therefore this that we say to thee. So in order for the people to believe that you're not telling people to break the laws of God, do this in front of everybody. Come up to us while everybody's here and perform something. He's going to tell them what to do, right? We have four men which... We, which have a vow on them. Which have what? A vow. What vow is this? And a vow to kill Paul. No. Give me that number. Give me that number six chapter. Because it's all going back to the laws of God. Because Paul kept the law. We just read that people were accusing Paul of going around teaching people not to keep the law. So they're like, in, in order for you to basically circumvent that and change their way of thinking of how you're teaching people, do this by the law that you're keeping. Go ahead. Uh, what was Start at verse. No, no, start at. Start at, uh. Yeah, start at two. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 6 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, whether, uh, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow. A vow a vow. Of a Nazarite. A what? A Nazarite. Paul had a Nazarite vow, read. To separate themselves unto the Lord, uh -huh. he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine uh -huh. or vinegar of strong drink. Read. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes. Go back. Go down to. Uh, it's it. Let me see. Yeah, eighteen. Yeah, give me that. Verse eighteen, and the Nazarite shall sit. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation uh -huh. at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, they talk about the temple, go to the temple and shave your head to end the vow. That's what they're talking about before, read. And shall take the hair of the head of, sep of his separation uh -huh. and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. Read. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram. The what? The sodden shoulder of the ram. Animal sacrifice, read. And one unleavened cake out of the basket, uh -huh. and one unleavened wafer, and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite uh -huh. after the hair of his separation hey, is Lord. shaven. Keep, keep and the priest shall wave it's like it, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. Uh -huh. This is the holy of the priest with the wave bre breast uh -huh. and heave shoulder. And after that, the Nazarite may drink wine. Exactly. After your vows over, you can drink wine. But guess what? He's at the temple offering a sacrifice. Go ahead. Hey, this is, what, what I, verse was that? This is what number six. That? The whole sixth chapter is talking about it. That was numbers. That's numbers. That's in the law. But this is what the vows are talking about with Paul. 
go to the temple and offer a sacrifice. That's what they're saying to Paul. Read, Let me read this again. Verse 23. Do therefore that this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow. Four men have a Nazarite vow. Read. Watch this. This is Acts 18, before 21. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence to Syria. And with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. Paul had that same vow. So a Nazarite vow is when you don't cut your hair until however long you make a vow to the most high. You can't cut your hair, you can't drink wine, you can't eat grapes, nothing, vinegar, anything that has to do with the vine, you can't eat, you can't consume. And you gotta grow your hair out until whenever you make a vow to the most high. He has a Nazarite vow. However long he made up, he don't know how to tell us. Whatever the most, he made a deal with the most high about, whether it's 10 years, 20 years, can't shave your head that whole time. Go ahead. Now, go back to Acts 21 and 24. We have four men which have a vow on them. Take them and purify thyself Wait. with them. Purify yourself with them, read. And be at charges with them uh -huh. that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things well, if they were informed concerning thee uh -huh. or nothing. Yeah, whatever, you, whatever the, what the rumors are about you tell people not to keep the law, they gonna know you're keeping the law by doing this sacrifice at the temple and completing your vow to Nazareth. Read. But thou, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly. Uh, what? Walkest orderly. Walk orderly according to the commandments. Read. And keepest God, keepest the law. Period. But the congregation is a temple. He went to the temple and made an offer. Read. Verse 26. Then Paul took the men. Uh -huh. then, and the next day purifying himself. Read. With them entered into the temple. Did what? Entered into the temple. Wait a minute. I thought you, Christ died. You got to go to the temple anymore make a sacrifice. That's what he said. But no offense. We're just reading the Bible. Because the Bible doesn't agree with what you're talking about. Read. Our people are taught that, man. That's what yeah, they, they get taught that, but that's not true. They don't read. This is well after Christ died. Go ahead. To signify, the what? to signify, read it. Oh, to read that part again. The, then, then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself, uh -huh. with them entered into the temple. Entered into the temple, do what? To signify, the, to signify the accomplishment uh -huh. of the days of purification, uh -huh. until that an offering. A what? An offering. Wait a minute. They don't do offerings anymore because Christ died. Read that again. Until that an offering uh -huh. should be offered. For every one of them. Four people did an offering at the temple. Well after Christ died. Christ was taken up in the first chapter of Acts. This is years later. Acts 21. Acts 18 showed he had a, 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 a heir with a or basically signifying his vow. And then Acts 21, they told him to go to the temple and cut his hair off, signifying that you keep the law and made a sacrifice at the temple. That's what it says. So the law can't be done away with. The temple is still useful, but at this time right now, we don't have a temple because it got destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. So now what you're referencing is more of a spiritual sense of keeping the law. Even though there's so tangible things we can do, like I said, not shave your beard, not eat abominable foods, wear 100% clothing, those things we can control. We don't have to offer a sacrifice. Give me Romans 12 real quick. Where are you at? We, oh, where are you at? Oh, no, no, drop that. Get, uh, Romans 12 and 2. And also, like, back then, like, okay, since we're not in, uh, we're, we're not in the land of Israel under our own government or whatever, back then, if you committed a sin unworthy unto death, you will get charged, prosecuted, to, uh, in front of the elders and priests and get put to death immediately. Now, today, if you get put to death, I mean, if you, so, uh, if you commit a sin uh, worthy of death, right, that may not happen to you because we don't have the power to do that. But the Most High God can still kill you for that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the only thing about us with Paul talking about under the law, because we're not living under the law right now because we don't have un we don't have the power to enforce those laws here in the land of our enemies. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's certain laws that we have to keep, like you know what I mean. And there's no, there might not be an immediate punishment like it was in ancient days, but God might kill you right there and then. You know what I'm saying? So we still have to keep God's laws. That's right. Give me, um, I think it's 1 John 5. Let me see. That's what I want. 
Yeah, First John 5 and 16. Give me this one. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. Uh -huh. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh -huh. mercies of God, read on, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah, present your body a living sacrifice now. Because the Most High is already offended by temple sacrifices, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be accepted. Because back in the ancient world, what were we doing? We were stashing away goats and sheep, committing a sin, like, oh, I'm just going to sacrifice it, it's going to be good to go. But that was the carnal mind that we had. But now it's a spiritual sense, like we said. Now that we believe and have faith in the rule of false Christ, we believe that, okay, we can do what he did by keeping the law in the spiritual sense in, my, in our mind, and then we're going to act it out. Because what you think is what you're going to do, right? That's how it works. You, you, in your mind, it's your heart going to the Bible. Go ahead. That you present yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, holy, acceptable uh -huh. unto God, read on. which is your reasonable service. It's a reasonable service, read. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, read. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, that's how you're born again. You're not born again like how uh, uh, Nicodemus came to Christ. I got to go into my mother's room and be born again? No, it's your mind, your mindset. How you think. And the Christian church is going to say all you do is have faith. But, I mean, that's half the battle. Because faith without works is dead, right? So what are the works? Faith is a work, but faith without right. works is dead, right, right or wrong. Right. 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 So what are the works? That's what I'm asking. Right. That's that's not that's not the works that it's talking about. That's that's called charity, but that's not the works that it's talking about. Give me um where you at? You have first John five and sixteen? Give me Galatians three and five real quick. Give me that. You keep reading that. Uh it's lucky. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh -huh. that ye may prove what it what it what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of God. What's the perfect will of God? What's the perfect will of God? Because he said, be transformed by renewing your mind, and and basically present yourself as doing the perfect will of God. What's the perfect will? What I read says, love your neighbors and love yourself. Is that, is that exactly it? Love, love God, God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Yourself. That's the law, right? That's the perfect will of God. But is that the law? That's, that's the law. in the law, right? That's a part of the law, yeah. But all laws hang on those two, right? right. So, I mean, what? If I love you, I'm not going to commit adultery against you. I'm not going to steal from you. I'm not going to kill from you, right? right? So, that's what it, that's what Christ said. So, if you're keeping all the laws, you're, you're still doing the two. Because you love your neighbor as yourself. But your neighbor is not everybody that walks in here. Your neighbor is your fellow Israelite, not everybody else. Because Christ didn't come for everybody. Well, you'll get that in a second. Where you at? Yeah, hold this. Give me that. And we're going to get to where you at. Go ahead. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse 8. Uh -huh. This is how you teach the Bible. You don't just read one verse and just come with a theology. Like, no, the Bible answers itself. Read. I delight to do thy will. I delight to do thy will. God's will. Read on. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Yay. Thy law is within my heart. The law is within what? My heart. The heart is what? Your mind. That's what it's talking about. That's the will of God. The, the entire Mosaic law. Do you believe that? Yeah, believe that. Your mind, your actions, your government has an effect on what's going through. But do you have to keep the law? Because that's, that, that's, the, that's the main contention right now. The law is within doing what God is going to so do you fulfill the law? Why is that? I can't fulfill the law. Because I'm a sinner, first of all. Wait a minute. You're a sinner? How do you not sin though? How do you not sin? Can you not sin? So we just we just had the same conversation. I think you were kind of behind the other brother. Brother, brother, brother. We got, we, we got, to, we got to go into it again. Where you at? What'd you hold? My bad. Give me that. Psalms forty and eight. Give me first, first John five and sixteen. And then you give me um. Uh, yeah, go ahead. First John five and sixteen. If any man see his brother's sin, a sin which is not unto death, 
he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that, that for them that sin not unto death. How do you give somebody life, according to the Bible? In, in what instructions? So, having faith is an instruction? Just have faith? What the Bible actually do, which is be baptized. Excuse me? Be baptized. Be baptized? Does Christ baptize anybody? No. Wait a minute. No. I said that Christ baptized anybody. No, baptize anybody. Did Paul baptize anybody? No. Well, so, well, well, Paul did, yeah. No, Paul, he didn't. Paul said he baptized. Who? Gainus, there was another one. I don't remember all of How did he baptize him? In water? It, it doesn't say that in the Bible. First Corinthians? All right, let, let's let's see what it says. Get Acts 19. Yeah, let, 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 let I mean, like I said, you, 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 I think you're second Christianity, brother. You're not you're not you're not listening to understand. You're listening and kind of bucking up against what we're teaching. But read that verse again before you start. Which one? No, you read that. That's what I'm saying. You read that. Read that. Read that part again, real quick. If, uh, First John five and sixteen. If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he, and he shall ask, and he shall give him life. He shall give him life. What did you say? Life was. Believe in Jesus. Go ahead. You said instructions earlier, right? I, mean, you said, I said what instructions? You said have faith. How does one have faith? Like if they don't believe in Christ, like how does that work? They just believe it just as you said it. What if they don't believe it? I, I believe that. But so somebody's. I, oh, you said, you said believe in Christ. I have faith, and then what? And then what? Oh, walking the statues, the laws, right? So they do have to keep the laws. Oh, no doubt you have to try to, but you can't sin here. It's possible for you to sin still, definitely. Let's say you're going to be here for another 40 years. Uh-huh. You're not going to commit no sin for the next 40 years. I have faith, I'm not going to, yeah. You have faith, but that doesn't say it's going to be true. Yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody but the most high knows the future. I'm not going to just blatantly say I'm never going to sit again because that kind of be like blasphemy. You suppose I like I'm not that arrogant. Like most I can kill me tomorrow. Like what? what, what? It's, not, it's not been a, a valid point to make. But the point is, you can't sin willfully. So you're saying you're a sinner because in your flesh, but that's not an excuse. Because why you don't keep the law? You don't know the law. Right or wrong? So do you shave your face? So does the law say you can shave your face? So you're breaking the law willfully, right? I mean, there's a whole bunch of laws. I'm just asking about one law. I'm just right. pointing out what I can see right now. I know I'm pretty sure you don't wear 100 clothing, but I'm just pointing out one law that you can control in the near future, so you don't sin anymore willfully. So you do shave your face, right? And you know the law says you can't shave your face, correct? I know the old test, which is part of the law. Great. So do you shave your face willfully? Oh, no doubt. So you're sitting willfully, right? I, I'm sure. I'm sure that you know, according to what you're saying. I'm, no, I'm talking about the Bible. Right. I'm talking about I'm, everything. I'm talking about is the first time. Right. I'm trying to get you built up in the spirit, brother. Right. I'm trying to correct you before judgment day, because when you get judged, if you're not keeping the law, you're going to get judged for it. It's not going to be a good look. So if you don't do what's right before that day comes, there's going to be a hard judgment upon you, brother. So. We're trying to prevent that. There's a reason you came up here today, to get the proper understanding. Because the Christian church is contradictory of what we're talking about. And that's what you learn from, and that's why you're telling us what you're telling us. And that's what was taught to all our people, and that's how we're still in disarray right now. Because we're telling you, well, we didn't talk about it particularly, but I don't know if the brother mentioned that we are the Israelites. You, you mentioned that first. So if we're the Israelites, we have, like he said, we have, we have an obligation to God as the chosen people of God to be his representatives and live lawfully live holy, which means separate. And so if it's separate, like you said in Romans 12, we can't be conformed to this world. People in the world shave their face. Why do you want to do that?